Morning everyone, it's Alison from The Pottery and Artist. Today I'm going to show you how to make fantastic shadows using all types of yellows, okay? We'll be making believable shadows and we won't be using black at all. We'll be using complementary colours and other things, okay? So if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, click on the red oblong underneath and there's a little grey bell by the side. So if you click on that, you'll always get an update in your YouTube box if I've got a new video on. Okay, so let's get into the yellows and see what beautiful shadows we can make. By the end of this video, you'll never need to use black again to use shadows. And your yellow shadows on whatever yellow subject you're painting will look really believable. Okay, see you soon. Morning, pottery and artists. We're going to start work now on mixing shadows for yellow paints. Uh, a lot of you might be struggling to mix believable shadows with your yellow paints. I'm going to show you today how to mix believable colours, believ believable shadows, without using black. So first of all, this is my setup. I've got some tissues, my paints. I'm just using one flat inch brush, that's all I need. A pencil to write down the names of my colours and a piece of watercolour paper. Plus I've got two watercolour jugs, which is plenty of room for swilling paint and a terry flannel face cloth, okay, which is absorbent to wipe my brush, clean my brush. The other thing I've got is a colour wheel. You can get these on the internet quite easily. There's be a link in the description below of where you can go and search for these. I'd print one off before you start this exercise because it'll really give you some good information about yellows and what types of yellows there are. That is, there are warm yellows and cool yellows and pure yellows. So let's get started. So the first of my yellows that I'm going to paint on this watercolour paper is a pure yellow. It's aureolin, it's made by Windsor & Newton and it's as pure yellow as I've got in my painting stash. So I'm going to paint a longish rectangle using the paint quite strongly so we can see its true characteristics. So there's my pure yellow. I'm going to rinse my brush really well, bang the hairs of the brush gently on the base of the pot to get rid of all your paint. Then bring it out, wipe the handle so that you don't have any running water, then dip it in clean water. Now I'm going to go for another yellow. This is a slightly warmer yellow. This yellow has a bit of orange in it. This is Indian yellow and it's actually by um, Sennelier. So I'm going to get a mix of that. I'm diluting it down with some water, blending it on the palette first, and then again making a similar rectangular shape on the watercolour paper. You can see already, I hope, that these two are really different yellows. This one's a lot warmer than this one. So again, I'm going to rinse my brush in my rinsing pot. And then I'm going to wipe the handle once more, dip it in my fresh clean pot of water. And this time I'm going to pick up this yellow. This is from a lovely Japanese watercolour set that I've got by Kuritake. It's a gorgeous uh, kit, it's £26 and there are 12 colours in. This is professional Japanese watercolour. So let's put this colour down. I move that box out of the way. Again I'm making a, a nice rectangular size there so we can see the true personality of that yellow. And I'm going to rinse my brush. Rinse it really well. You've got to really rinse your brush well when you're mixing yellow colours and yellow shadows because yellow is so bright. You don't want to sully it with any uh, unwanted pigment that might be pigment particles that would be floating around in your water jug. So now we've got the three colours. If I can just bring them up to you. As you can see, they're quite different. This is our sort of main true yellow. Then this one, if you can see, 
is a bit cooler. It's heading towards the green, just slightly. And this one is a lot warmer and it's heading towards the orange. Let me show you what I mean on the colour wheel. On the colour wheel you can see that there's yellow and next to yellow is yellowy green and then there's green and so on. Then on the other side of yellow you've got yellowish orange then that moves to full blown orange and so on. So every colour on the watercolour or every colour on the colour wheel is moving towards a different colour. There's a sort of continuum. So what we need to work out with our yellow shadows is what colour is our yellow moving towards, if any? Because it will then inform us of what colours to mix with it to give us a nice shadow. So as we're looking at this now, this one is obviously moving towards the green and this one is moving towards the orange. So we've got a better idea now of the qualities of these colours. Let's, let's move on to mixing some shadows for these, but before I do that, I want to let this dry completely. You can hair dry it. Um, see you back in the next clip. So to mix a shadow for our pure yellow, which is our main yellow here, all we need to do is go straight through the centre of the colour wheel and find the colour on the other side. This is called the colour complement. Violet and yellow are complementaries. They're opposite the colour wheel through the centre. So if I mix a little bit of violet with this pure yellow, I'll get a shadow colour. Let's do that. So I'm going to take some of my pure colour, my aureolin, there, and I'm going to pick up a tiny speck of its opposite, which is violet. Now this violet is so strong, it's a real bully. So we have to put, see how strong it is? But there, it's given us a shadow already. So I haven't added black, I've just added the complement to yellow, which is violet. So I'm going to paint that on and show you how that looks. Okay, so we have a very subtle, believable shadow on that yellow. Should we work on the next one? And now you can see how that shadow has dried on the aureolin with a speck of Windsor Violet. So I've written the colour mixes there as an Ed Memoir when I come back again. Let's move on to the next one. We've got my Japanese cool yellow, the yellow with a bit of green in it. So opposite that on the colour wheel, let's see what we can use. If I zoom out. So opposite yellow with a bit of green in it, this is very green, but yellow green, we can come across and it's a red violet colour. Now a red violet colour would be magenta. So I've got magenta and I'm going to mix a tiny bit of that into my Kuritake colour. So I'm going to get some of this yellow onto my palette first. And then I'm going to pick up a bit more water and add a tiny speck, if you can see it here. This is my permanent magenta gesture, so I'm using the corner of my brush. It's best to go slowly and pick up small amounts so that you can gauge the effect of your complement on your yellow. So this is permanent magenta being mixed into this greenish yellow. Can you see it starting to change tone, starting to darken up really subtly? bit more. Okay, I think that's about my limit, otherwise I'm going to, it's going to turn too dark. So there's my shadow colour there. And I'm going to paint it on to my original yellow. So there's the shadow colour for my yellow with a bit of green in it. Again, let's rinse my brush and write down with permanent 
magenta. Okay, in the next clip we'll be doing the last colour mix. So now for our final shadow colour on this yellow, I'm looking at the yellow with a bit of orange in it. Now if you look through the centre of this colour wheel, we go to the point through the centre out the other side, the complement for yellow with a bit of orange in it is blue with a bit of violet in it. So what I'm going to do is mix some violet with some blue to give me that colour. I haven't actually got a tube of blue violet, but you can buy them. So let's try that. So first of all, I'm getting my Indian yellow, puddle mixed. By the way, always start mixing colours. Start with the palest colour first on your palette. So say you're mixing yellow and dark blue, mix the yellow first and put the dark blue on afterwards. If you start with the dark blue and then try and add yellow, you'll add a heck of a lot of yellow to get the mix right and you'll waste a lot of paint. So there's my Indian yellow there. So opposite that on the colour wheel was a tiny, we'll have a tiny speck of violet and a tiny speck of Roy, uh, French ultramarine blue. So the mix of those two, violet and a bit of blue, again very very small amounts, that should give us a nice shadow on that colour. If you ever feel it's too dark, you can just dip your brush in to water and add some more water just to thin it down a little bit. So let's try that shadow colour on our paper. And there we are. So again, add right down the colours you've used. So I'm going to put in Windsor Violet and French Ultramarine Blue. There is a colour called Ultramarine Violet. That would probably do the trick, save you mixing those two together. Okay, so now we have all of these colours, if I just zoom out, with the shadow colour on. As they dry, they get a bit more subtle again. Alright, so I hope that's helped you get a head start with mixing yellows and mixing shadows on yellows. So feel free now to go forth and paint bananas, lemons, anything yellow that you can think of, and try adding shadows using these complementaries as I've explained on the colour wheel. Watch this video a few times more if you're not sure and put a comment in the comments box if you're stuck or you need help. I hope you subscribe to my channel, press that red oblong button and also if you can click the grey bell by the side of it, every time I upload a new video, which is usually every Saturday, you'll get a message in your YouTube box that I've got something up for you to watch. Thanks for watching. Bye.